Good evening, I'm Don Hudson and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the big seven stories right now. Topping the list, a tragic boating accident at Fort Loudon Lake, claiming a man's life. Now, according to TWRA, the incident happened this morning near the dam. TWRA says that two men were fishing when their boat got pulled into the dam spillway and capsized. One man was taken to Fort Loudon Medical Center. The other died on the scene. In this accident this morning, uh, both of those gentlemen had life jackets on, according to witness statements. But the force of that water coming out of those spillways is, is immense. I mean, you can't even put it into words, just the power that... That, uh, the water has there when it's fallen that great of a distance. Matt Cameron with TWRA says this marks Tennessee's 24th boating fatality this year, which is higher than the yearly average of 22 boating deaths. It's important to remember how to be safe while boating and swimming and TVA, excuse me, saying that you should never go into the water alone and always have a life jacket. Also, make sure you have a safety plan just in case there is an emergency. State agencies advise boaters to always leave the motor running because the water below a dam can roil up and trap or even capsize boaters in just a matter of moments. All right, our second big seven story tonight, an East Tennessee family grieving the loss of their mother and their daughter. According to the Anderson County Sheriff's Office, Shiesty Mayberry was shot and killed two weeks ago on Moores Gap Road in the high school community. They add that Jason Dockery is the suspect in that shooting. Now, you may recall from our news coverage, Dockery was a focus of a manhunt centered in Lee County, Virginia, in East Tennessee. He was arrested two days after the murder in Union County. Now back to Mayberry. She was a mother of four children. Her family still trying to put the pieces together as they are grieving her loss. Very painful um, for me, of course, but more so seeing what her girls are going through. Um, you know, I know they've had a lot of times they've worried about their mom, but none of us expected anything like this to happen. All right, Dockery, by the way, his next court appearance scheduled for tomorrow morning in Union County. Our next big seven at seven story, a Knoxville man accused of killing an unborn child going in front of a judge. The trial for Peyton McCarty began this week. In July of last year, we reported McCarty had allegedly been involved in a domestic dispute after a pregnant woman was found in the road by first responders with life-threatening injuries. Now, we're told she reportedly recovered but lost her unborn child. McCarty is facing several charges because of this, including felony murder and vehicular homicide. Our next big story, a man indicted on nine charges in court after evading police for more than a month. Earlier today, we told you Isaac Arms had been taken into custody in connection to a vehicular homicide connected to Bebo's Cafe in West Knoxville over the weekend. And according to court documents, he was caught on camera with a firearm in his waistband before getting into a car. Now, the nine indictments not only include vehicular homicide, but also possession and concealing of a firearm by a convicted felon, driving under the influence, and premeditated murder. Now, this incident was back in May when 24-year-old Destiny Jones was ejected from a car on the Alcoa Highway ramp near downtown while suffering from a gunshot wound. She was taken to the hospital but was later pronounced dead. This isn't the only charge in connection to the shooting and crash. In fact, in August, Jaheim Houston was arrested after a search was conducted by U.S. Marshals. We will continue to follow this case as it moves through the court system and keep you informed. Our next big story, new information on an education law that put a lot of stress on families across Tennessee. After talk all summer about third grade students being held back under new state laws, uh, numbers now show us, from, at least from Knox County schools, only a few students actually didn't make the cut. The school system saying today that 36 third graders were retained. That represents 0.8% of the overall third grade enrollment at the end of the school year. Six families chose to have their children stay in third grade rather than getting support services like summer learning camps or tutoring during the school year that would help them move on to the fourth grade. If you remember, families of kids who did not score high enough on that reading part of their TCAP test, they also had a chance to retake the test or to appeal. Now, back in June, we learned that Tennessee's Education Department approved appeals for more than 80% of families, prompting some lawmakers to ask why the law was really ever needed. But also back then, Governor Lee said that investments in education have brought encouraging gains. 
Our next Big 7 story tonight, we are learning more about a phone call that changed a couple of women's lives. Yesterday, we told you about the Hawkins County Dispatcher being recognized for her work helping a woman deliver a baby over the phone. Now, Suzanne Paxton was recently awarded the Stork Award for her work on that call back in August. Paxton says a family member had not arrived and the baby was on the way. She calmly walked the woman through what to do, what to do for about seven minutes and then the baby girl was born. I have three children of my own, so, you know, I think having experienced childbirth uh, helps me keep pretty calm and able to support her while she had to go through that at home. Yeah. All right, once medical crews arrive, both mom and baby were taken to the hospital to be checked out. The dispatch center's executive director praising Paxson's calm voice and professionalism through a very intense situation. I can only imagine. And our last Big 7 story, a change in venue for a popular musician has officials warning concert goers about some parking problems. Oliver Anthony's concert will be the biggest event ever held at Smoky Stadium. So officials releasing urgent warnings and some parking instructions. We're told the show is general admission and early birds will have first choice on seating. Officials are also reminding people to be aware of the signs pertaining to parking both on and off the site. There will be three overflow lots used for additional parking and some complimentary shuttles for before and after the show for the attendees. Now, the main lot only holds 1,600 cars. Oliver Anthony's concert again is being held Thursday night. I would suggest getting there early.